Hey everyone, it's Duncan Epping, yellowbricks.com, and today we've got something really cool to show you, and these are the changes that are introduced in vSphere 7.0 Update 3 for the vSphere clustering services. First of all, as you can see, the vCLS virtual machines now include a unique identifier, which basically prevents the situation where you have multiple clusters, and you will end up potentially with multiple virtual machines with the exact same name in your environment. So that is now prevented by adding a unique identifier to the name of the virtual machine. Now on top of that, the other thing that we are introducing in 7.0 Update 3 is the ability to specify on which data store your VCLS virtual machines need to be provisioned. So if you have a couple of local data stores, maybe you have iSCSI, NFS, vSAN, whatever it ends up being, you can now specify the data stores on which these virtual machines should be provisioned. Some data stores may, for instance, be replicated. So you could avoid those data stores or you know, you can avoid the ability to use those data stores. On top of that, some data stores may also be all flash versus, uh, for instance, a hybrid environment. So you, know, you can make that clear distinction. The other thing that we introduced is the ability to specify for certain solutions, so third-party vendor solutions, to block the provisioning uh, of VCLS virtual machines on the data stores that they are presenting. So if that is the case, uh, there's now an option called Solution Blocked, and that actually shows you those solutions that are blocking the provisioning of VCLS on particular data stores. And then last but not least, one of the new functionalities that we introduced is the ability to specify an anti-affinity rule through a compute policy. Now, compute policies were already part of VMware Cloud and AWS, and we've now also introduced them for the on-premises version of vSphere. So as you can see, we simply select the anti-affinity rule, we create a tag or we assign a tag to the rule, and then after we've assigned the tag to the rule, we can simply assign the tag to a virtual machine, and then after we've assigned the tag to a virtual machine, what is going to happen, of course, is that DRS is going to take this compute policy into consideration when it comes to the placement of virtual machines. So the rule has now been created. Next, we're going to go to the virtual machine itself. And then for a particular virtual machine, we're going to assign a tag to it. And then when DRS realizes a tag has been assigned, that virtual machine is going to be, uh, or the VCLS virtual machine that coincides on the same host as that virtual machine is going to be moved away. So we're now assigning the tag to our uh, Kubernetes control plane. And then when we go to the host, hopefully we will see that the virtual machine is migrated live, the VCLS virtual machine is migrated live to another host. So we're not moving the control plane, we're actually moving the VCLS virtual machine to another host in the cluster. So let's click on the host, and then let's go to virtual machines, and let's wait for a couple of seconds so we can hopefully see that virtual machine move to another host in the cluster. And there you go, the virtual machine is moving to another host in the cluster. Hopefully, with that, I've been able to show you what is new for VCLS in 7.0 Update 3. Thanks for watching. I hope to see you next time. Make sure to subscribe to my channel and like the video.